Thank you, and thank you for the opportunity to present on um, the national health insurance and its importance for us uh, in, 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 in South Africa and what we're trying to achieve as a, as a wider society. I don't know if we can call the presentation up, uh, the technical guys, um, then I can actually talk to my slide. You can see from the title that um, I see the whole process of establishing a national health insurance system is about a bigger project, about a new kind of society. And I think very deeply implicated in the idea of establishing a new kind of healthcare service which can bring classes together uh, across the social divide is the idea of a kind of society that we want to create in South Africa. And I think this is the first opportunity post-94 that this question is not an external question that explores the condition of the poor as an external category. It's absolutely about the choices and the position of the middle class in creating a new kind of South African society. So I think the debate about establishing a new kind of healthcare system needs to be coupled with the idea of what kind of society do we want to live in as South Africans and not externalize the problem as something about how do we create access for poor people to healthcare, but also talked about how we contribute as citizens who are more privileged from the middle classes largely, both in terms of being part of the political elite, the policy elites and other sec professional sectors about what choices are we wanting to make about creating a new kind of South African society. And I absolutely believe that the debate around the national health insurance <coughs> proposals and how it's resolved will be a litmus test for the kind of society we want to create in South Africa. And that will either be a more polarized, fractured society based on, on class and social and racial inequality or more inclusive society. So I think we shouldn't lose sight of that bigger agenda. And that's why I call my, my title the kind of future society we want to, to create in South Africa. Um, sorry, let me just call my... So, um, so just to re reflect on what we're confronting in terms of a, a, a looming crisis, we have an unsustainable two-tiered model of healthcare provision. And it's a crisis that also confronts the middle class. In terms of actual spending, we find that South Africa is well within the range that the, the WHO recommends for, for spending of a country of our, our size. However, it's deeply inequitably split. The split of funds, the total GDP flows into our healthcare, you find that 4.1% of the total funds or 50% of the total funds is only utilized by 16% of the population. And the remaining 50%, 84% of the population has to, to deal with. And those are people who don't have the means to afford private forms of care. So if South Africa epitomizes anything, it's an anti-social solidaristic model. It's kind of perhaps the par excellence example of an anti-social solidaristic model where there's a complete bifurcation between access to healthcare between the private and the public sector based on someone's class position and also the labor market position, so to speak. But for the middle classes, it's also becoming increasingly unsustainable because private healthcare costs have increased by 120% over the last 10 years. And it's a, based on an unsustainable commercial model of healthcare provision, which reflects a mismatch between services and costs. Okay? And we have 102 medical aid schemes uh, where the costs, in terms of uh, people accessing those medical aid schemes packages, in terms of the average wages, increased from 7% in the 1980s to 30% by 2008. So increasingly, you're going to find that more, and what is happening at the moment, that more middle class people actually squeeze out of healthcare service provision. They can't afford the costs. And so it's a huge issue for the middle class about how we get a more affordable system of public health care of sufficient quality that the middle class can also buy into. Okay, so I think it's a crucial question. I don't think the issue of a new kind of health care is something that is separate from the, the position of the middle class in terms of their health care, uh, their health care needs into the future. But another telling indication of the social, the actual lack of social solidarity in the system is that in fact the state incentivizes the private sector healthcare system through the medical aid subsidies that it gives to essentially professional employees and that amounts to 10 billion rand. So that's a gift of the state to the middle class, okay, for providing a differentiated form of health care, a level of quality that's not seen in poorer sections of our society, but in fact is the mechanism by which this anti-social solidaristic model is reproduced. It's through this medical aid, this tax subsidy that I get as a professional works at Rhodes University who accesses a medical aid scheme, part of which is subsidized by the state, which allows me to access private medical care in a place like Grahamstown. 
And if I'm probably sure I have a domestic worker, that domestic worker can't access that quality of care. They're dependent on the public system of care. So there's no cross-subsidization happening. And in fact, it's in the antithesis of a social solidaristic model. Okay? And the cost, it's the extremity of, 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 of the differentiation reflected in the fact that private patients, 11,150 rand is spent on private patients compared to 2,760 cent per capita on public patients. And the whole human resource structure is geared towards the private sector with 59% of doctors, 93% of dentists, 89% of pharmacists, all in the private sector. Okay? So the whole system is geared around meeting the needs of the private care sector and those who have the privilege to access, to, 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 to access private health care. Um, and it's a completely unsustainable model. Okay? And that's where the national health insurance proposals come into play. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Have I I've got you on this slide. I think what's very important is the language of the national health insurance is a misnomer because, in fact, it's not an insurance-based model. What's being proposed is a tax-based model, which is much more consistent with the national health service. For example, the one that we have in the UK. So, I, and I think there's a, there's a politics about why the insurance is privileged in that idea of a national health insurance model. But I think we should assure ourselves of the idea that what we're talking about is an insurance-based model. It's actually a national health service. And as groups within civil society and the wider populace and the people coming from professional positions, we have some policy influence. We should reaffirm that the objective is actually to establish a national health service. Okay? And part of the elements of a national health service is that it's about universal health care access. And that's what the NHI proposals are talking to, that they want to extend universal access. Now, for South Africa, that's an incredibly radical proposal. Because what it's arguing is that everyone, regardless of their social position and their financial position, should have access to a basic basket of health care. Okay? And that shouldn't be means tested. That's a complete and radical departure from social policies that we've had since 1994, which have been means tested, which have been selective, and which have been exclusionary. And what it allows us, it allows us to talk and, 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 and cohere around the language of creating a far more inclusive society because we are, we, 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 are, we are attached by this idea of a universal approach to healthcare provision. Okay? Some of the NHI objectives are to improve access to quality healthcare, pro provide financial risk protection, improve cost subsidization, and provide an essential health care package. So the package, the, 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 the set of proposals itself is trying to break from this tradition of an anti-social solidaristic model to one that's increasingly about the middle class working with other social groups like the poor, the unemployed, to pool health care resources in a way that health care can go to those who need it, not on the basis of the ability to pay, but on the basis of need. Again, a radical proposal for, for South African social policy into the future. And then the principles, I think, are the crucial ones we, I think, us as the civil society groups need to go year round. It's about right to access, where healthcare will be free at the point of delivery. And that, of course, gives effect to a constitutional principle that everyone has a right of access to healthcare services, and it's the state's responsibility to, right, to realize such social rights. It's also crucially, crucially about social solidarity. And that has not been a principle that's been encoded in South African social policy since 94. Since 94, it's been about how we deal with the poor as an external category, about how we develop policy that deals with this condition while the middle class are, in, in large respects, divorced from the problems of poverty and inequality. This idea of social solidarity as embedded in the NHI principles completely breaks with that tradition because embedded in the agenda that's being proposed is the idea that this can only succeed if the middle class buy in to a universal system of healthcare provision. And it will fail if we can't get the middle class to buy into this healthcare provision. In real terms, one of the things and one of the consequences of the effect of these proposals is that the middle class needs to consider giving up the tax subsidy, this 10 billion rand that they get to access private care, and to pool those funds into a single fund so that healthcare can go to those who need it. And that's a big choice that the middle class is going to have to confront. And I think it comes back to the issue of the consciousness of the middle class in realizing and, and seeing the need to, 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 to achieve that objective. And it's also based on equity, crucially, that those with greatest health care need are provided with a timely access and expansion of access to quality care to vulnerable groups. And I think one has to contextualize this, and what I would argue as a historian of social policy, that these proposals are absolutely an indication of a social democratic approach to health care provision, where health care is an entitlement of social citizenship. It's not an discretion, it's an entitlement of social citizenship, and it's based on cross-class cross, cross -class solidarity for universal provision of public goods. 
And I think that is the real radical underpinning of this agenda, and I don't think we should lose that agenda, the principles and the values that underpin healthcare provision into the future. Okay, so I've talked about equity, social solidarity, and right to access, why those are important. Um, I won't talk to the model of implementation because Dave will be dealing with that. Um, and I think I want to make a point about the battle of ideas because that's what's happening in South Africa at the moment. You'll see that a lot of government's attention is towards the development of a developmental state. However, and how it's framed is quite exclusionary. For example, Minister President Zuma said, we are building a developmental state and not a welfare state. Uh, and the social grants will be linked to economic activity and community development to enable short-term beneficiaries to become self-supporting in the long run. There's a sort of uh, polarization between the idea of a developmental state and a welfare state. And it comes back to this idea the welfare state causes dependency as a kind of rehashing of kind of a new liberal language that we saw in Thatcherite Britain in the 1970s, where essentially there was an argument that state needs to, pour, to pull back, the market needed to provide people social needs, for people's social needs and social goods. However, and this is where the battle of ideas come in, if you actually look at ANC policy, it talks to universal primary education. It talks to a national statutory social insurance arrangements. Uh, it talks to, and of course, most importantly, the national health insurance proposals, which are about universal access uh, and the main source of revenue being an NHA fund, which will be tax-based. Okay? Now, these are all the key attributes of a social democratic policy, set of policies. So there's a policy schizophrenia in the ANC. On the one level, it's talking about its developmental state and privileging economism. On the other level, in terms of the substance of social policy, it's completely about a social democratic approach, which is about universalization of social provision, universalization of public goods, based on cross-class social solidarity. And I think that's where we need to locate ourselves in terms of these battle of ideas. Um, now, I think what's quite important is to also understand that... Um, that embedded in South African history, in, in the policy history, is deeply, uh, deeply embedded is this idea of a national health service, and one that is universal, and that one is which, which is state provided. Um, and I think the starting point for me is to look at, for example, the Gluckman Commission of 1942 to 1944. Perhaps the most radical set of proposals that ever emerged about healthcare reform in South Africa. And in fact, I would say that is the most radical form of, of proposals that emerged. And essentially, Gluckman was in, sat in the, in the 1940s. Um, it was a committee of the SMIT, of the, of the uh, SMUTS government of the time, but was led by a radical progressive called Henry Gluckman. And what his vision was, to establish a national health service in South Africa that would be uh, non-racial, that would be democratic, and that would be based on preventative health care. And in this, his prognosis of the problems of South African health care was that the mere provision of mere doctoring would not provide more health. So essentially he was pushing for a preventative health care model. He talked to the problems of South African health care being a spectacle of divided control, poor coordination, overlapping in maldistribution and gaps, and a crazy patchwork of provision. We know this because this is very similar to what we have currently. And he also talked to the proper integration and coordination of the various health services would be better achieved if the services were nationally planned and directed. So essentially, Gachman was arguing that if you want to achieve a national health service in South Africa, if you want to have provision for all citizens in the country, you needed to nationalize health, the health care services. <coughs> and that would need it to be based on uh, the surrendering of the provinces of the control of the healthcare services. So the state needed to take control of the healthcare services and the delivery of the health services would be decentralized into 20 regions and be based on 400 preventative health centers. And he was very influenced by the work of Sidney Clark who developed the Polella experiment, the preventative healthcare care model. And crucial, he said that it would be based on essentially funded health tax. And the principle is kind of epitome of a social democratic approach, which he said, that healthcare should be funded on an equitable basis from each in proportion to his means instead of inequitable from each according to the degree of his ill health. And this is proposals that emerged between 42 and 44. Okay? And what's crucial as well is also to indicate the historical support for these proposals. You found, for example, the um, civil society groups, including the trade unions, the political parties, the ANC, the Communist Party of South Africa, were fully supportive of the Gluckman proposals. And I think it's important to reflect on what the Medical Association of South Africa were willing to, to, to say about these proposals. They said, we are prepared on our own initiative to surrender some of our independence and to become, to some extent, a socialized profession. So the Medical Association of South Africa in the 40s were saying, yes, we're prepared to be socialized. In fact, we prefer to be socialized, but we know that in terms of where the country is politically, what we need to establish is a, national, uh, a nationalized healthcare service. So this is the depth in which there was the support for a national health service in the 40s. 
And this, these proposals, of course, failed to be implemented because Smuts rejected the idea that the provinces should, the control of healthcare should be taken away from the provinces. Um, and so the, the proposals were shelved. And I think part of our historical agenda is how do we reclaim the impetus of what Gluckman represented was, which was the impetus towards establishing a universal national healthcare service. But historically, you found that the idea of a national health service was also very deeply embedded in the ANC. For example, the ANC under Kuma produces very important historical document called African Claims, which had a Bill of Rights, and which represented, <coughs> I would argue, the first emergence of so a social democratic approach to, 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 to South African state. He talks to the right of every child to free and compulsory education, equality of treatment with regards to uh, income maintenance, and most importantly, the establishment of free medical and health service for all sections of the population. So that's ANC policy in 1943, perhaps the most crucial ANC document to emerge in the 40s, a document called African Claims. It's reflected again in the Freedom Charter, under with which we, 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 uh, uh, Albert Lutuli was the, the, the head. A right to, f to free state provided health care, prevented health care scheme to be run by the state, free medical and health care of hospitalizations provided for all special care. So you can see that historically this idea of a national health service, and in fact I would argue a social democratic uh, health care service, is very deeply embedded in, in, in ANC history. Um, and this discourse reflects a discourse that was influenced by what was happening in Britain at the time, which was at this Labour Party establishing the welfare state based on universal access of the poor and the middle class to a single form of, of, of provision. Um, and that there was this cross-filtering of ideas. And I think we, need, must not, we must not lose sight that embedded in this idea of a national health insurance in South Africa is this very strong and powerful policy history which is aiming to establish a national health service. And I would argue that what we're trying to achieve here is the completion of this incomplete historical project which is establishing a South African national health service which will be more inclusive. Of course, after 1994, you found that this again reflected in key policy documents like the RDP-based document was the idea of universal provision of, of, of social policy, including a preventative health care service, a national health care service. It was reflected in the ANC's election manifesto. It's reflected in the 90s in ANC policy thinking about establishing a national health service. It's reflected in the National Health Plan for South Africa in 1994. What I'm trying to argue here is that there's been a complete consistency of ideas around establishing a national health service, but that those ideas are displaced after the ANC comes into power. You found the group around uh, the gear economic frame become hegemonic, and there's the displacement of this universal idea. It's about then means tested, it's about the poor becoming an external category, about the middle class being separate from an agenda of an inclusive approach to transforming South African healthcare. And you saw that in the documents that emerged, the white paper on the RDP, for example, had language of affordability, cost containment, privatization. There's a shift from a social democratic language. There's an abandonment of that language. Okay, and that's most tellingly consolidated in the GEAR program. And the important thing for social policy of GEAR is that revolutionary restraint, that fiscal restraint of reducing the fiscal deficit to 3%, which means there was a massive squeeze on social expenditure. And that was there was this decisive break with the social demo more inclusive social democratic agenda. However, okay, I've, I need to wrap up. Um, I think where I want to end it is to say that what we're finding here is that it's absolutely in the interest of the middle class to be engaged in this debate around establishing a national health service. Let's call it the NHI. Uh, that it is about how we create a new kind of society how we create a new kind of capitalism. We contest this idea of capitalism. That is not a laissez-faire capitalism that we're looking for. That is a more social democratic capitalism. Maybe that's the roadway to a socialist possibility. I hope it would be. But I think that's where the level of the contestation has to happen. And that it's about coalition building and social compacting uh, with a value basis around universalism and social solidarity. I think the NHI proposals and Minister Mozzoledi gives us a profound opportunity to reclaim that redistributive agenda that's historically embedded, I think, in ANC policy since the 1940s. And I think the political education issue, it's about the middle classes now. I think it's about the consciousness of the middle classes and getting the middle classes to increasingly buy into the idea of universal public goods, like, for example, the national health insurance system. I think that's absolutely possible. And I'd conclude that where the foci needs to now rest is to reclaim this historical agenda by talking about establishing a national health campaign. A national health campaign that can bring together social groups across strata and bring the middle class into a, a, a coalition that can start to, uh, start to talk 
to the establishment of a universal national health service in South Africa that the middle class can participate in equally with other sectors of society. And I think if we can achieve that, then we will create the bridgehead to the possibilities of a new kind of South African society, a new kind of inclusive South African society, which we're all struggling and still struggling to achieve since we achieved democracy in, in 1994. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs>